So, anyway, I'm Chris Cowden. I'm the director of Women in Their Work. Welcome. Kelly uh, O'Connor is here from San Antonio, and she's created this really astonishing environment. And she's agreed to talk with us a bit about her work, about the conception, what she's thinking about. And she's also going to be available for a few questions afterwards. We're going to publish a catalog about, about this show, so check back. It'll probably be ready in about a month. So anyway, join me in welcoming Kelly O'Connor. Well, thank you all for coming. If y'all can kind of come close, I've been talking all night and I'm a little <laughs> hoarse. But um, thank you so much to Women and Their Work for giving me this opportunity. It's you know very unique to get a large space like this to make very experimental work, so I really appreciate that. Also, thank you to Margo Sawyer, wherever you are out there. <laughs> my mentor who has given me wonderful guidance throughout this whole process. And then also, thank you so much to my husband, Chip. He's This dough would not exist without him. He was really my collaborator, and he's given me so much support. So I really appreciate that. So um, I've been looking a lot. You know, I've always been attracted to these sort of quintessential American landscapes. And I really, I, I'm very familiar with these environments. Uh, such as Disneyland and Yellowstone. I spent much of my childhood going and traveling to these places and I'm very intrigued by them but they also have such control and I wonder what that does to your subconscious. And so what I'm trying to do through these works is explore that sort of hypnotic quality of these spaces by creating these um, sort of patterns with the hexagon and just pro further pushing that sort of control and, and that um, creating these sort of voids. Um, I also am looking a lot at World's Fairs, and I happen to be here in Austin when the Harry Ransom Center had a wonderful exhibition of that, and so I felt like doing a dome was a no-brainer. This geodesic dome, I was able to explore the sort of hexagon patterns and really explore this idea of facade and looking behind the facade, and I think that pushes the, the sort of metaphor of these controlled spaces. So you can see we have, I have collage on the wall, sculpture, and then I also wanted to create this sort of environmental um, installation right here. And this is, I'm trying to push the idea of going behind the facade and sort of getting inside this, this pre-existing civilization, um, a sort of calcified environment with the wasp nests that you see up in there, which are actually found wasp nests that I dip in gold paint and I make the eggs, they aren't real wasp eggs, and I often paint them with nail polish, so, but um, I think I would like to open up to questions, if anybody has any questions for me. <coughs> yes? Have you been working with the shape of the hexagon? I had. I like continue. You know, I actually first I started with these uh, wasp nests. I, I first started working with them during an uh, exhibition I did at Saladillas in San Antonio, and I was really intrigued by the pattern. And I basically just took this really micro version and wanted to apply it to my larger collage works. And so these hexagons are actually extracted from record covers. I use the exacto knife and have lots of stencils and variety of sizes and pull them from from these covers and piece them together so they're not actually like glued on top of each other they fit together like a puzzle they're sort of inlaid several people have asked questions about the rays could you talk about I think your... they kind of emphasize that hypnotic quality you kind of just get in a trance maybe looking at these sort of radial patterns and they also are a way for me to direct the viewer to come behind and explore what's behind this facade. So, Denise. Um, you use some psychoanalytic language. Do you have much of an interest in that, like, outside of it? Could you talk more about that in regards to your work? Like how it affects your subconscious? Mm -hmm. um, I guess I just think it's pretty interesting that these environments are supposed to evoke enjoyment and um, create joy and make you really want to you know, have leisure and stuff and happiness, but it's such an artificial space that it's sort of this artificial happiness. And this character that I use in se several of my works, Judy Garland, I think is the perfect portrayal 
of that dichotomy of this sort of polished, happy facade, but then really had a very traumatic life, um, was introduced to drugs at a very young age to help her stay thin and, you know, be on for all of her movies. And she's such an American icon that um, I just like that. I like that juxtaposition of this dark interior and polished facade. I think it's really a metaphor that a lot of, you know, people, it's very sort of American in a way, you know, the way we portray ourselves, and then there are all these things going on behind the scenes. Could you talk about the small model of the Epcot Center over there? Yes, that's also, um, I was interested in the shift to scale, so I wanted to have this sort of monument, and then this be the room. Um, this is more of like the society, this sort of found civilization. It's obviously from a different era. I'm very into this mid-century modern um, aesthetic. And I think that time period, we were really, it was very much focused on the, the idea of utopia and looking towards the future. And we all had like a very bright sense of the future. We're sort of a post-apocalyptic society now. And so I, I'm really attracted to that time period and Epcot, you know, was inspired at that time with Buckminster Fuller, the geodesic dome. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yes, the next. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is it important that all the materials be synthetic or repurposed organic materials that they in some way reflect this artificial conception of a universe? Well, I think there is definitely both. You know, there's some very organic materials being used, but then some more synthetic materials. But I do like to keep a very sort of handmade quality. I don't want it, the technology to, like, go beyond what I understand. Like, even this dome, we got into some, you know, like, getting precise measurements and stuff. But I, I didn't want it to become too... I haven't ventured into video and stuff like that. I'm, I'm staying a little... I like using my hands and making the work. Yes. What uh, what do you need to like, do collages? What well, actually, after I graduated, um, I went to UT. Um, I had very limited space, and so I started working on very small collages. Uh, it was just materials that I had available. It's something I've always been attracted to, paper. Um, and then gradually, as my studio got bigger, the work got bigger. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.